Hello, I'm Pastor James Kyle, pastor of the Vallejo Drive SDA Church. I want to say welcome to our audience, wherever you may be. These are difficult times we're going through. Many of us are ensconced in our homes, trying to avoid infection and exposure. So we want you to feel comfortable to know that God is with you, that we are praying for you on a constant basis, and that you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Trust in the Lord. Use good common sense. And sit back today and enjoy the worship services prepared for you. We wish you could be here in our sanctuary, but you can't. But you can enjoy us right there in your living rooms or wherever you may be. So prepare yourself for a wonderful experience in the Lord. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress.
Hello, church family. This is the time when we stop and pause for a moment to pray. Whether you're in your apartment, at your home, or in the park, wherever you may be, we get a moment to pray together. And as we pray, here's a promise for us found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. May you experience the joy of God right now wherever you are. As you pray without ceasing, may you sense God speaking to your heart in a personal and powerful way. And whatever's on your heart, I invite you now to lift it up to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you for creating this world and for creating every single one of us to live in your world. You love us, you value us, and Lord, we thank you for this awesome way of communicating with you, and Lord, that you can communicate with us through prayer. I pray for our members and our friends and our community that wherever they are, Lord Jesus, you will speak to their heart the words they need to hear at this time. And Lord, I also pray for those who have been sick and ill, we ask for your healing upon them, but not just physical healing, Lord. We seek your healing of our soul, spiritual healing, forgiving us of our sins, speaking to us truth to replace the lies that we have believed about ourselves, about you, about this world. And God, I pray that your truth will set us free in every area of our life. Lord, may you be honored and glorified through our praying, through our relationships, in our work, wherever we find ourselves. Lord, we thank you for speaking to our hearts each day. And as the message will be spoken to us today by Pastor Kyle, I pray that the words that you have given to him will speak to us in our day and that we will live them by your grace and by your power because you are a majestic and mighty God in your holy and precious name we pray, amen. Be blessed, church. Happy Sabbath, church family. It is so fantastic to have you online or on the website doing church with us today. My name is Pastor Linda, and I am so glad that we are able to celebrate God our Creator, Jesus our Savior, and the Holy Spirit who is our guide as we are together here as one church family, as one body, we know that the Spirit is here. And I am practicing social distancing on this Sabbath. I may have taken it a little too far, but it's so important for us to still get out and get that exercise, that fresh air that our bodies need, that sunshine that we definitely need. So I encourage you to, with the people that you live with, not family members from other places, but the people that you live with, go outside, take a walk, just take a moment to breathe. I know before I came here to Vallejo Drive Church, I was the pastor of one of our SDA universities, and students would come in super stressed. Sometimes that was me talking to myself. And one of the things I would ask them is, are you eating well? Are you sleeping well? And are you taking time to talk to Jesus? Those three things. Friends, I'm gonna ask you the same question right now. Are you eating well? Are you sleeping well? Are you taking time to talk to Jesus? And if you aren't, I encourage you to figure out that new schedule. We can't, uh, we can't live by what we used to do, our old pattern and past, in this new like hanging out together in the house thing. We have to figure out our new norm. So when are you eating? Are you sleeping? When are you talking to Jesus? And walking outside and enjoying nature. Um, I encourage you to do that this week if you haven't figured that out for you and your family yet. Friends, there's so many announcements, and so I'm going to go really, 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 really quickly through them, but no fear, because everything I'm about to say is on the new website. Friends, if you haven't checked it out, graceunconditional.com, graceunconditional.com. Say it with me, graceunconditional.com. That is is our new website. It's beautiful. We're so thankful for the talent that God has given people to make things like this happen. Everything I'm about to say is going to be on the website so you can find it there in case you missed um, me speaking too quickly <laughs> as we go through things. Graceunconditional.com.
Okay, here are some things that we want to make sure that each of you know. There are a ton of different services that are happening, um, and I'm going to just go through Sabbath through Sunday, Sabbath through Friday, and make sure that you know everything that's happening. On Sabbath mornings, we know it's already happened today, but you can catch it again next Sabbath as well. We have Kids Connection at 9.30. We have Adult Sab School at 10. There's the live pastoral welcome by one of the church pastors at 10.45 on Facebook Live so you can talk to us. And then the church service begins at 11 a.m. Both on the website and on Facebook Live so that we can continue. And I know you know this because you're watching the service with us right now. So thanks for being here with us. This afternoon at two o'clock, we have prayer time for parents who have littles. So if you'd like to join Pastor Ben for this prayer time, we encourage you to do that. At 2.30, we have Parents Connection. So if you are a parent of a little, this is a great time to set them on a Sabbath activity, a new Pathfinder honor, whatever it might be, so that you, the parents, can just take some time to be together with other parents who understand. Um, and we encourage this for you every Sabbath, 2.30 p.m., Parents Connection. Also, 3.30 p.m. Sabbath, today we continue to have the Young Adult Vine, uh, the, the Vine, I apologize, the Young Adult Bible Study, and we love that that's happening. If you are 18 to 35 in that young area, uh, we encourage you to please join Pastor Lauren as, as they have that time together on Zoom. Again, all the links are in the newsletter and on the website. We also have 4 p.m. story time every single day. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every single day. On Facebook Live, there is story time with me or one of the other church pastors. And so we encourage you to check that out. Whew, we made it through Sunday. Monday, we are starting a new Bible study. And this is going to be the Love at Works musical Bible study. Musical Bible study. I know, I said the same thing too. So if you do not know what this is, I encourage you to check it out. Monday at seven, every single Monday for the next 10 to 12 weeks. It'll be on the website and it'll be streaming live on Facebook Live so you can interact um, with different people. This is a really fantastic study for those that are new to the church or may not know anything about the Adventist church and just wanna to get to know more. But it's also really fantastic for those of you who have been a part of the church, just haven't taken the time to think of some of these things that are a part of our theology. So I encourage you for that. Wednesday night, we continue to have the two Bible studies, one at six and one at seven. The first one, Pastor Mark's house Bible study, and then Koinonia, that is at seven. Friday nights, 7.30 p.m., the Bible study is still happening there. And then we also wanted to let you know that during this time, we want to be of assistance to you. So if you know of anyone that needs assistance because they are social distancing at home and cannot get out, we encourage you to go on to the new website. What was it again, friends? Graceunconditional.com slash outreach and fill out the share a need. If you know of anyone that has a need, whether it's groceries, or whether it's figuring out social media uh, so they can be a part of all of this, or they need a couple of uh, a couple of coins to help with laundry, whatever it might be. We encourage you to fill out that form under share a need, whether it's for you or for someone else that you know that's in the community. Then we have for those of you who've ask, been asking, how can we help? Thank you for asking this question and for being a part of our church that connects together in this way. Friends, there is also on the same form, graceunconditional.com slash outreach, a form that's called fill a need. If you are interested in getting involved in any way, we encourage you to fill out that form. You can tell us specifically how you'd like to help or leave it general, and we'll contact you and let you know of the different needs that we have and see if there's any way, uh, any one of those that you might be able to help us. So share need, fill a need. This is the way we're being responsive um, and being a church family during this time together. Friends, we also wanted to let you know that we're doing shout outs. Friends, we want to know what you've been up to. 
if there's a birthday, like Camden, who celebrated his third birthday this last week, or there's an anniversary, or there's just a praise report that someone wants to share with the rest of the church family, we encourage you to email me, or to message us on Facebook, or to email it in so it's words whatever you want to do pictures photos words whatever it is but we encourage you every tuesday to get that into us for a shout out for sabbath morning so uh as we're thinking of that be creative get those phones out get that get the email skills going on or give us a call and just let us know what's happening and we would love to share uh the praises and the things that are happening in your life with others on sabbath Ooh, friends Finally, I wanted to let you know that during this time, while we are doing church at a distance, we realize there are a number of our church family members who do not know that they can connect with us on Facebook or on the website because we don't have their email addresses. Friends on the website, this is for you. This is where we need your help, church family. We really, I'm being serious. We need your help on this. If you know of someone in our church that has not signed up for a newsletter or just doesn't have any of this social media thing together, would you fill out the church uh, directory update form just with their name and if you have their phone or email go ahead and put that in there that way we can connect with them and make sure that they are connected with all of us while we are doing church at a distance would you do that friends church directory update on the website what's the website graceunconditional.com friends that is all for now and i'm just again so thankful to be able to spend sabbath with you in this way and I look forward to doing it when we're together once again. But until then, happy Sabbath, and thanks for being a part of church with us today. Bye, friends. In the kingdom of the living God, there is a mighty fortress, a secret hiding place that is safe from danger. This mighty fortress is found by trusting God. Yes, all who draw near to God by faith find this place of protection and peace. It is a wonderful place where fear and worry are replaced with confidence and courage. Those who put their trust in God Discover the safest shelter. Outside, the world is filled with dangers, including a wicked enemy. This enemy is like a cruel bird catcher who spends his days setting traps and his nights thinking of ways to capture and destroy. But like a mother bird folding her wings around her babies to protect them, God wraps himself around his children and saves them from every trap and hidden danger. God pulls his precious ones in close and guards them. The enemy tries to fill the darkness with terrors, but God's children need not fear the nighttime. Wild wolves, disease, even death itself, none of these things can overcome God's children. Even in the darkness, the light of God goes forth. The darkness can never put out this light, shining as a constant reminder that all who follow God are safe and will find victory over every danger. The enemy not only attacks in the darkness, but in the daytime as well. Even when the sun shines its brightest, the enemy's evil plans fly at God's chosen ones like deadly arrows. But even the cleverest of his weapons will fail. Though disaster may be all around, and many people may fall into the enemy's traps, those who trust in God can stand confidently. The Lord always pulls his children close in times of trouble. When danger strikes, God is their strength. At the Lord's command is a vast army of angels. As part of God's limitless protection, 
these heavenly forces stand ready to obey God's command to guard his children. Satan and his wicked army of demons cannot defeat the Lord's mighty angels. All who challenge them are sure to fail. Those under God's protection never need to fear. God's power is so great that it transforms his children into mighty warriors. They find victory no matter the dangers they face. If the enemy sends prowling lions, God will shut their mouths. If the enemy sends slithering cobras, God will give his servants the power to crush these snakes under their feet. At God's command, Satan and all his forces must run and hide. There is no enemy who can defeat God's children. God makes this promise to all who love and trust him. Call on me and I will answer you. I will stand beside you in times of trouble. God not only rescues his children, but he also rewards them beyond their wildest dreams. They will inherit God's wonderful promise of eternal life. Yes, those who trust in the Lord will live with him forever in heaven. Make the Lord Jesus your fortress and hiding place and receive his promise of salvation. Hi everyone, I hope all of you have been having um, a creative week. I hope um, everyone has been able to um, find unique ways um, to still um, connect with each other, um, with family and friends. Um, I am so grateful that we have a um, media that we can still connect with you all and still keep um, church programming going. Um, I am just amazed also talking with other pastors from around our conference, just all the different ways that everyone has been um, connecting with each other, doing outreach and ministry. It's just been really um, cool to see God work in those ways. Um, I just want to um, encourage you guys, um, if you haven't yet, um, please check out um, all of the new content that we've been putting um, on our media platforms. Our new website is up and while we are still building it, um, we are also putting things on there for you guys. Um, so we would love for you to check out any of our features on there. Um, like we said last week, so every week we are going to be changing the content. So you won't be able to go back and look at past content, just a heads up. Um, but I would just like to take the time now to um, just say a special um, prayer for all of you. Um, during all of this, we are still able to have community, have church. The conference has been, um, you know, working hard so that all of... Um, our um, church is able to still function and still able to um, work during these times, which has just been um, unforeseen. I don't think anyone think, thought that would happen, but it is, and God willing, it is still going. Um, and our church offering for this week is for our local conference advance, and um, they have been working so hard by still um, working, still making sure the conference is running, um, they're doing all of the guidelines. Um, we have Iris making sure everyone's in check, that we're in line with the city. Um, so we are just so grateful for all of the people there that are working hard so that the churches can still uh, have community and um, just be able to um, spend time together. Um, so if you, um, after this video, if um, you haven't already, um, our link for Adventist giving will be right above or below me. I'm pretty sure it's above um, this screen that you're seeing. Um, so the link right there is AdventistGiving.com and um, that's where the offering is going this week. Um, but I would really like to pray with you all um, just a special blessing over um, what we are able to give um, during this time. So um, if you are down, dear Heavenly Father, um, I am so grateful um, that we still get to um, just have community, have worship, be able to um, commune together in all of our different Zoom Bible studies in our um, throughout the week with um, 
our kids story time and our worship and our kids worship on Sabbath. God, it's crazy that we still get to do all these things. And we just thank you for um, the blessings, um, both from people's time, um, from financial blessings, um, that we've been able to provide all of these things still for our community, our families, and our kids. God, thank you so much for that blessing. And I just um, ask that anyone um, who gives, God, that you just um, really bless their hearts. God, please bless um, anything that comes in. Let it be used for your will um, and only your will. God, I just pray that you guide um, each and every one of us this week as we enter into the Sabbath. In God's name I pray. Amen. I'll see you later, guys. Bye.
Good morning, Vallejo Drive family. As we now open up the Word of God, let us pray. Lord, we pray now for the power of your Holy Spirit to allow our audience, wherever they may be, to understand your Word and apply it to their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why? are so many people calling themselves Christians today, yet the world seems to be no better for their presence? Why is the most difficult place to hold on to your faith actually in the church? There's something going on here that causes many people to say one thing, but to act in a completely different way. John chapter 17 and verse 3, we find these words. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. There is a difference, my friends, between mere acquaintance and truly knowing God, between seeing him and loving him, between talking to him and actually following him. An example, this would be Judas. Judas worked beside Jesus for three years. He saw his miracles, he heard his sermons. He was a charter member of the new Christian faith, but he did not have a relationship with his master. He did not know who Jesus really was. Religion does not guarantee a relationship, and church attendance may not be a real sign of spiritual maturity. There are a lot of spiritually immature people attending our churches every day. I have counseled couples who have been together for decades, and yet at the end of 40 years, they still have grown further apart rather than closer together. Proximity to Jesus does not always bring devotion or commitment. Another example of this would be Nicodemus. He came to Jesus in the middle of the night, seeking counsel and wisdom. He could have spoken to Jesus any time during the day, but he kind of wanted to hedge his bet in case things didn't go as he hoped they would. You see, he had much to lose in terms of his position and standing in his church to be seen publicly with this simple carpenter. Nicodemus, you see, was a fan, but he was not quite yet a follower. Kyle Edelman, in his book, Not a Fan, explains it this way. Fans often confuse their admiration for devotion. They mistake their knowledge of Jesus with intimacy with Jesus. Fans assume their good intentions make up for their apathetic faith. He goes on and adds, and I think Jesus has a lot of fans these days, fans who cheer for him when things are going well, but who walk away when it's a difficult season. Fans who sit safely in the stands cheering, but they know nothing of the sacrifice and the pain of the field. Fans of Jesus who know all about him, but they don't know him. I wonder how many of us that could apply to, who can speak all kinds of truth about Jesus, but may not have a personal relationship with Jesus. Like Judas, like Nicodemus, Jesus had many fans, but few followers. You see, the test of how well you know him boils down to how well you can obey him, how well you follow him. For Satan to succeed in killing Jesus, he needed someone who had seen Jesus, who had been around him, but who really didn't know him, who really didn't love him. Fans can be fickle. When their teams are losing, they switch sides. They jump from one fan wagon to another. Satan needed a fan in order to kill Jesus, and he found one in Judas. My concern is how many fans are running around our church today, or in our community, or around the world. People who sing his praises, but don't know him. People who lift their hands, holy hands in worship, but have not committed their souls to him. Jesus makes it clear that eternal life is the byproduct of knowing him. You can never be who you were once you come to know who God is. By beholding him, we become changed into his likeness. 
In Christ Object Lessons, page 114, we find this statement. The experimental knowledge of God and Jesus Christ, whom he sent, transforms man into the image of God. It gives to man the mastery of himself, bringing every impulse and passion of the lower nature under the control of the higher powers of the mind. It makes its possessor a son of God and heir of heaven. It brings him into communion with the mind of the infinite and opens to him the rich treasures of the universe. This is the power of knowing who God is. This is the life-changing power of being intimate with your God. In 1 John chapter 4, beginning of verse 7 and 8, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. That being true, the knowledge of God changes our characters. If you haven't changed who you are, you may not actually know God the way you think you do. See, it makes us loving and kind. And that's one of the tests that we can say, if you're if not a loving, kind person, you may not know God. Not just loving to your family members or to your wife or husband. That may be easy for many. But how about loving those people you really don't like and you really don't see eye to eye with? Those folk who get on your last nerve, can you love them? Those folk who disagree with you all the time, can you love them? There are so many would-be followers of Jesus who are self-deceived. They perpetrate the saving knowledge, but they are actually lost. So in difficult times like we're going through right now, these folk are confused and afraid. You see, times of stress don't make you into a new person. They merely reveal the person that you are. Satan knows that the best way to bring down a church or to stop a movement is not to attack it from without, but to weaken it from within. He needs people who are religious, but not spiritual, fans, but not followers. Satan does all he can to exploit our fallen natures so that we don't sense a need for intimacy or for, for more than acquaintance. We don't sense a need for true intimacy with our Savior, and that's his plan. So what does he use? Well, one of the things he uses is the pride of our opinion, always having to be right, believing that no one knows more than we know. He also uses self-sufficiency, the ability to take care of ourselves as if we don't need a God to take care of us. He also uses distraction, bringing things into our lives that make us so busy we have no time to spend in communion, no time to spend in prayer, no time to spend in worship. There's an old spiritual that states, if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. And in these times, with our nation locked up, fighting a virus and a war, who doesn't need Jesus? And those who think they don't have only fooled themselves. Times like this demand more than just religion, more than acquaintance, more than cheering, adoring fans in the stands. Today, we must have a true, intimate, life-changing, transform transformative knowledge of who God is. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and 4 says, Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Followers of Jesus, those who truly know him, obey his voice. They are kind. They love. They forgive. They serve others just as Jesus commanded them to do. Followers are always looking for ways in which they can please their master. You see, fans dine at the a la carte menu of spiritual directives. They only choose what feels good or what's convenient or what they think is reasonable. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me, John 10, 27. Not fans, but followers. Those who hear him lovingly obey. Those who allow his word to direct 
their daily lives. Followers don't demand reasonable accommodation. They just trust in faith and do what God said. It was unreasonable for God to demand Abraham to kill his son Isaac. Abraham could have recognized that this was certainly an unreasonable request, but rather than focus on the reasonable accommodation, he decided to trust God and God blessed him with a miracle. Essentially, we need to get out of our own way. What's missing? Why we refuse to know God? It's because we may be in need of conversion. We may not be reborn. Followers of Christ are new creatures. They have been indeed reborn. The old man has passed away. All things have become new. And our problem is we bury the old man, but when circumstances arise, we keep digging him up and asking him to live out his life in us again instead of keeping him in the ground. If we would keep that old man of sin buried, we'd be much happier people. What a tragedy to be religious for years, for decades. And then when Jesus comes to have him say, depart from me, I never knew you. So let me close. I invite each of you to fall, on, fall at the foot of Jesus at the cross and to surrender your heart to a loving Savior who is coming back soon to save us, to obey him, to follow him, to cherish him. It's time for us to go deep, deep in his word, deep in our prayers, deep in a life of sacrifice. Superficial and shallow faith cannot keep us in times of distress. So Jesus says to us in Revelation 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. It is a shame that in these last days, as portrayed in Revelation 3, Jesus is still standing outside rather than being inside. But he's standing there, knocking. While you may be content to be a fan, Jesus knocks at your door to make you a true believer, a true follower. When will we finally decide to let him in? When will we realize the place that he has in our hearts and the peace and protection that he wants to give us as followers, not as fans? Perhaps the difficult times we're now going through is a wake-up call. Maybe God has finally got your attention. Why would you wait another day to make it right with God? Who do you know that loves you like Jesus? Who do you know that offers you eternal life? Who do you know? that went to a cross to die for you. Indeed, the real question that I want you to ponder is who do you know? Let us pray. Father, many of us have been comfortable with a superficial surface relationship. You call us to go deep, to spend time with you, quality time in your word, in prayer, and in service to others. Wake us up, Lord. May we recognize the times in which we live and get it right. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. to
thank you for worshiping with us today. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, for what he means to us, for his sacrifice on our behalf. May we go deep. May we pray, study, and serve in ways that will enhance our relationship, our knowledge, our intimacy with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.